Today, I'm gonna to show you how to paint a realistic shadow under any object in Photoshop. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and today we're gonna to help you with your cutouts. The biggest thing to remember is that shadows tend to be like darker and more well-defined when they're close to the object, and they tend to get lighter and less well-defined the farther they get from the object. So my recommendation is to create multiple different layers for both the close shadows and the farther shadows. Alrighty, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. We're gonna start off by cutting our subject out. In this case, it's this piece of fruit. Nice and easy selection here. We're gonna to go to select and then down to select subject. Fantastic. And let's go ahead and click on our layer mask. Now we can see we have some other stuff I didn't want necessarily in the selection. So I'm gonna hit L for my lasso tool and we're just gonna go ahead and make that selection, hit shift delete and fill that with black on my layer mask. There we go. And then I'm just gonna pop a solid color fill layer. We're just gonna go all the way to white and put that right underneath our object. All right, so now our object is cut out. It's time to make our shadows. Now we have our dark shadows that are gonna be directly under the object. And then we have our softer shadows that are gonna be a little bit larger. So let's go ahead and start with those dark shadows under our object. So we're gonna create a new layer right under the solid color fill layer. And I'm gonna zoom in and actually grab some of the shadow color that's right there and then simply start painting with my brush tool. There we go. So you can see we're painting with my brush tool, kind of continuing this existing shadow that's already there. If you didn't have a shadow, you can just choose a darker color of whatever's existing. There we go. Like in this case, you can see it's a dark red. Fantastic. So I'm just kind of like painting this in here and then choosing a little bit of a larger brush and then just kind of painting it in a little bit more. There we go, because we want like a solid area where the object is gonna contact the ground. Now keep in mind, we're not using grayscale shadows here. We wanna make sure the shadow color has a little bit of the object color in it, so that way it reflects light just like in real life. Let's go ahead and make that visible and we'll just zoom out. So there we go, we can see that's where we start. Something that looks like that looks pretty good when we're gonna make that a little bit bigger. Now my next suggestion is to do this in a lot of different layers. So that looks good to start with. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm gonna use a larger brush and we're gonna use a flow of like 10% and I'm just gonna kind of paint this in. You can see I'm mostly painting in where my object is. Like if I made this invisible, you can see most of my paint is there, but it's gonna kind of seep out underneath it. There we go. So you can see it's kind of like starting to come out right there towards the bottom. I'm keeping my shadow a little bit more on the right hand side than on the left hand side. And the reason for that is because the object is kind of like sitting on the ground right there a little bit more, okay? Still do a little bit on the left hand side, but definitely a little bit more on the right. And then my suggestion is get it to where you think it looks good. Like get it to where you're like, okay, that shadow is starting to look good. And then it's time to create another layer. So we can see we already have two layers. We have the shadow that's directly under there. You can lower these opacities at any time if they're too much. Okay, then on a new layer, we're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're gonna get even a larger brush and I'm gonna go a little bit softer with it. So I recommend kind of starting with your hard edge brush a little closer to your object and then getting you know larger and larger with your brushes and then just paint with like a low flow. That's kind of like the real key to this is to use a low flow on your brush there we go. You can see that's starting to look really, really good. If you don't like an area that you did, just hit E for the eraser tool and just choose a large soft edge brush and just erase it away. This really is like a kind of an opportunity to just take your time and like kind of analyze light and see how things work together. But uh, the biggest tip that I can give you is to do this over a few different layers. So let's go ahead and start off. So there's no shadow. We have our first, our second, and our third. You can see if I take away any of these, it really doesn't work nearly as well. Let's go ahead and create another shadow. This time we're gonna choose a slightly lighter color. And again, a nice, large, soft edge brush. I'm gonna change my layer blend mode. We can use multiply. And that's just gonna make things a little bit darker for us. There we go. Because this whole fruit is gonna obscure some light, right? There we go. That's looking pretty good. Uh, I think it's a little bit too much red in there. So not a big deal. You can hit Control or Command U 
and then you can just desaturate it, okay? I don't know, wanna go all that way, but I wanna find the nice balance there, okay? And then I think this is just a little bit too visible too, so we're just gonna make it a little bit less visible. So you can see each one of these shadows, as I go through, they all add their own unique little bit of depth to the object itself. And again, go in here and change your opacity and kind of work with these. Um, this one actually looks good. I'm gonna duplicate that by hitting Control or Command J. Okay, so you can see just duplicated that there. And then I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a blur. So we'll go to Filter, down to Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. There we go, Gaussian Blur, that looks good, but it's too, it's too visible. So we're just gonna kind of take that opacity down there a little bit. There we go, that's looking really, really good. So just these little, little edits on each one of these layers can help you make a much more realistic looking uh, shadow for your object. And then the cool thing here is the object itself, we really don't want, like you can see right here, it's a little bit light right on the bottom of the edge of the object. So I actually wanna paint sometimes on the object itself. So we're gonna create a new layer and now we're gonna show you a really cool tool called a clipping mask, and that's gonna allow me to paint on the object itself. Cause we painted a pretty nice shadow here, but I need to do a little bit of cleanup on the object. So we're gonna use a clipping mask to do that. So a clipping mask is very easy to do. I'm just gonna create this new layer right above our uh, pomegranate here. And then I almost called it tomato. <laughs> and then I'm gonna show you how a clipping mask work. So if I just have a regular layer and I just paint with a color right over top of my pomegranate here, you can see it's visible everywhere. But if I go ahead and right click here and then go down to where it says create clipping mask, there we go, you can see now it's only gonna be visible where my pomegranate is visible. And I can even move it around and things like that. But because our object's cut out, that's the only place it can be visible. You can then right click if you want and go down to release clipping mask, there we go and it's gonna be visible everywhere once more. Okay, so that's the concept I'm gonna to use to paint some shadow on underneath my object. We're gonna create a new layer, right click and go to create clipping mask, okay? And remember, this is now only gonna be visible exactly where the pomegranate's visible, but instead of painting with that blue color, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my shadow color and we're just gonna paint this in, okay? So I'm gonna make sure that we don't get this weird little area right here under my pomegranate and that everything actually blends in just the way it should. And I'm holding Alt or Option to actually sample some of my shadow color that I actually painted. There we go, and you can see, there we go. Look at the, um, the edge between the two is starting to blend much, much better. There we go. Grab this dark color there and kind of paint that in. Fantastic, let's just go ahead and lower down the saturation of that just a little bit and go ahead and clean this up. Now I just use select subject to cut out the pomegranate. I could use the pen tool and you know, taking more time and everything like that. But in this case, I think select subject, it just worked well. It's a nice quick way to do this sort of thing. So let's go ahead and zoom out and take a look at the before and after. Let me grab this slightly dark color here. All right, that's looking great there. So here's the before, let's zoom in there. So there's the before and there's the after. And you can see this is only visible where the pomegranate is visible. That's an important uh, takeaway. Here we go, because I'm taking some of the shadow color. I'm just gonna erase away where it didn't really need to be there. I'm taking the shadow color and then painting it back on the pomegranate itself. All right, and even like here, I don't want this like light colored border here. So we're just gonna grab some of this dark color here and kind of paint this in right here so we don't get any like weird fringing and things like that underneath the pomegranate. This could be a person, this could be a shoe, this could, you know, <laughs> quite literally be anything. There we are, fantastic. Okay, and even when we zoom out, so that's a little bit too light right there, right? I'm just gonna come back in here and kind of darken that up a little bit there. Okay, so even when we zoom out, we can see there's the before and the after. You can see it just helps clean up the object itself. So it's not only important to paint the shadow, but it's important to paint the object. So let's go ahead and group those together and let's go ahead and group together our shadow. Now, you guys can download this entire PSD on flurn.com in the link below. That way you can kind of just open this up and dissect it and see what you like. Here we go, the pomegranate, you can see when it's gone, the shadow doesn't look anything special 
uh, the only part of the shadow that I care about is underneath the pomegranate. And the shadow layer itself, you can see, is made up of all these different layers. So you can see, if I turn each one of these off, our shadow starts to get less and less realistic, okay? Even if I go in, let's just go ahead and turn them back on. There we go. If I turn off like just that layer or just that layer, it becomes a lot less realistic. But I would encourage you as you do this to turn some of these layers off and on and kind of get an idea of like, is this better or is this worse? And should I make this more visible or less visible? Like you could go in and say, ooh, I like that. I think there should be more of that. You can hit Control or Command J to duplicate that layer and then maybe I'll just move it over here and then give it like a really big Gaussian blur. And that's gonna be like where the pomegranate just like blocks light from, you know, hitting the table or whatever it is, right? Like a large blur. There we go, something like that. So here we go, we have a very large soft edge blur. There we go. It's gonna add that. You know what, I'm gonna hit undo a couple times because I, I made that blur way too large. That was, that was an irresponsibly large blur, Aaron. Calm down your blur, it does not need to be that big. Okay, there we go, <laughs> there we go. But now I just have this like blur that I can kind of move around and be like, oh, you know what, actually that looks pretty good. And then I can still go in there and change the opacity of that blur. I can hit Control or Command T and kind of stretch that out too. But basically that's the idea. You wanna make sure that you're, you know, creating this nice hard shadow under the object itself. And that that shadow just kind of gets softer and larger as it goes out from the shadow. And then I also wanna just, I know I said this again, but I also wanna you know, just point out that the shadow is not completely gray, okay? It has some red in it because it's reflecting color from the original object. Let's go ahead and show you if this look, if it was completely gray. So just temporarily, I'm gonna create a hue saturation adjustment layer. We're gonna clip this to the, uh, to the shadow. So it's only gonna be visible where the shadow is. Now watch when I take the saturation down to zero. You can see that doesn't really look exactly right, right? It should have some of the original color in the shadow. It's gonna take some of the color of the uh, pomegranate and bounce it against the floor. It's gonna help it make it look a lot more realistic. Thanks so much for watching. If you wanna get a free tutorial from us every single week, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash that notification bell, and leave a comment right down below on any project you're working on. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again, and I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.